Hello and welcome to BDTV. Uh, you're, you're one of all, over 200 people worldwide who have uh, registered and are going to be watching this from kitchen tables and from spare rooms ac across the globe. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, my name is Peter Kane. I run the BD consultancy uh, and helping professional firms grow um, mostly across Europe but also the US. We've created this today in response to something that clients have told us over the last five to six weeks of saying, there's lots of information online, lots of tips and lots of articles being published, but the number one thing we really want to hear is how are other people in my position responding to this? So I'm gonna introduce our first presenter in a moment and, and just give you clarity on how this will run. Um, we've received some questions in advance, uh, and if there are other things you'd like to hear, please click on Q&A to pose the question. There's also a poll which will run throughout the seminar on which BD skill sets are going to be in greater demand over the next six months. So please take time as we go through um, to, to respond to that uh, if you have the chance. And when we come to the Q&A at the, at the end, uh, we'll, ask, we'll ask our presenter to, to reflect on the results of that. We'll all, it, it's completely anonymous and, and we're very happy to share the results with you afterwards. Um, our speaker's going to have 10 minutes uh, and then, then we'll have a, uh, a Q&A for maybe five or six minutes uh, right at the end. And, and being live and, and deep in COVID era, we may also be joined by my dog or, or one of my children at some stage. So please excuse that if it happens. I think this is, this is part of the new normal. This session is being recorded and will be available to view on the BD Consultancy YouTube channel after, after, after we stop. And it will all be wrapped up um, by 2.20 today. So, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're delighted Peter Skinner is, is leading this first session. Um, every channel has a big event at the start when, when they're launching. Uh, for BBC One, they turn to perhaps the world's most famous firm with the coronation of George VI and Elizabeth. Uh, for Netflix, <coughs> it was politics and the House of Cards. And for Channel 5, it was the Spice Girls. Luckily, in Peter today, we have, we have someone who understands the establishment, has walked the corridors of power, and, and I'm hoping we'll add a, a pinch of spice to this. Um, I've worked with Peter for 12 years, and he, he has excellent experience in some of the world's leading firms, from uh, Allen and Overy to Slaughter and May. Um, He's smart and self-deprecating in equal measure uh, and has very interesting views to share. He, he joined BCLP, or BLP as it was then, in 2012. And following their merger with Brian Kiev two years ago, he was appointed head of BD for BCLP. Uh, the firm has 1,400 lawyers across 31 offices in 13 countries. Peter, you, you are very well placed to see what's happening in law at the moment, and, and thanks for agreeing to share how BCLP and you personally are responding. Uh, thanks, Peter. Um, your, your check's in the post for that very kind introduction. I'm, I'm not sure I wrote it quite like that, but thanks anyway. Um, I'm delighted to, to be here on, on, you know, to talk with Peter and uh, to work with the BD Consultancy on this first episode, let's call it, of BD TV. Um, I guess in the next 10 minutes, I'll just try and give you a, a little bit of insight into what I've seen and I'm seeing in law firms. Um, typically in law firm fashion, here's the disclaimer. Um, these are my views, not necessarily those of, of uh, BCLP, but fingers crossed I'm not too far from the mark as we go through. Um, so as Peter's already said, um, Berwyn Nathan Page and emerged with Brian Cave in April 2018. And as a result of that firm, it was a true merger, creating one firm, so one profit pool. It wasn't a Swiss terrain. Um, I came from the old BLP stable, as Peter said, uh, and pretty much overnight, the firm that I'd been involved with trebled in size. Um, it became pretty quick, pretty clear fairly quickly that the firm was in need of new London premises. Um, we needed a collaborative environment to to support clients, to support our own people and to keep meeting client needs. So the search went out for, for a new premises in London and we found in, I think it was early 2019, we found Governor's House, which is near Cannon Street in the city. Uh, and work started to move towards that transition out of our current property to Governor's House. Um, we knew from the outset we wanted that building to be agile, to be technology driven, to be open plan. 
Um, it was going to requ require a lot of behavior change for a lot of people. The building we're currently in, Adelaide House, is an iconic building, overlooks the Thames, the Shard, Tower Bridge. Um, there's a lot of people who really like the office, a lot of history there. And there were personal challenges. People, you know, they had their own, their own needs, personal dynamics, politics, team dynamics. All of that was into the mix with regards to this office move. And so it was a big challenge. So the firm invested a lot of time and effort to make sure that people were ready for that move. Targeted that move for Easter 2020 and lo and behold, along comes COVID-19. And here I am sat in my loft, talking to you down a phone, doing something I never thought I would do um, in, a, in an environment I never thought I'd see myself in. Um, so working from home basically happened overnight again. Um, we had to look at our clients, work about how we, how we operate for them, how we deliver for them, not just internal, but external clients as well. Um, and actually on a scale that we just never, ever seen before. Um, there was a rapid shift to digital communication. I think as everybody's seen Zoom, I mean, I'd never seen Zoom two months ago. I didn't even know what it was. You know, WebEx, WhatsApp groups, Skype, websites became critically important for client communication email communication sending the volume of content that started to get sent out, sent out by firms in a short period of time was absolutely astronomical um, and we lent on these tools like we've never lent on anything before in a in a pace that we've never lent on them before as well and to be fair actually i think they've performed pretty well i think they've stood up the test pretty well our it teams have stood up to the test well as well and i think they've been incredible um, as a side note, this kind of this enforced working from home in terms of the office move, um, I think it's shown that flexible working is doable. Um, I think it would be remiss of me if I didn't say that BCLP as a firm has always been massively supportive of flexible working. It's something that is really part of our culture. But, you know, let's not pretend there would have been, and there probably still are those with reservations. And I think that this enforced sort of work from home is going to be interesting to see how that hopefully reassures some of those last outliers. Um, I think as an aside, we've also seen it, it, this may help lawyers build relationships. And I've only really thought about this recently um, in that um, I don't think I'll be sticking my neck out too far if I say that not all lawyers are fantastic relationship builders. Um, and I think it's actually helped humanize lawyers to a degree. And Peter, you, you alluded to the background that you're likely to see potentially sat here, you know, in, in your home. Um, I've got, you know, my kids running around. I've got my dog running around. I think that clients have seen dodgy wallpaper. They've seen beards of partners who they probably never want to see ever again. Um, but they've had an insight into people's personal lives. Fingers crossed everybody on this call hasn't fallen foul of those sort of the faux pas that have gone viral with regards to these home-based video calls. But I think that we found out things about our partners and about our clients that we, we probably would never have found out before had we not been put into this situation. And I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how what's happened over recent months takes and influences relationships with clients going forwards. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree Peter, I've been, I've been tickled by the different sites we've seen over the months as well. The, one message we get from clients is, is um, okay, as you've been saying, let's, let's first of all get, uh, get some sort of business continuity, get people set up and working well from home. Let's turn off the tap and look at cash flow management. And now, and I, I think since, since Easter, we've started to see especially what do we do now to begin to look to the future and, uh, and emerge from this stronger? Where, where are you on, the, on that curve? Um, I mean, I think that like everybody, I think we, we, we try to act quickly early on. Um, there were travel bans, hiring, hiring freezes with, with exceptional circumstances aside, um, limitations on agency use, actually, you know, with external designers being used, we cancelled events and hospitality and all the things that a lot of people have done. We've also, we've gone out to some of our suppliers with outstanding invoices and we've asked them to, to look at those and potentially share some of the pain with us. It's been know sort of just sensible management of expenditure that you would expect to do anyway but it's just really been brought into focus so we've done things you know early on and we're, we're seeing those through and we're keeping a watch on it all the time um in terms of who you know it's a question of who's going to ride this storm best and how i think actually i think that larger 
well hedged firms probably will will survive best. Um, you'll probably find that some firms who have got a niche in a particular market, potentially those who have got an employment capability or a restructuring insolvency capability that's particularly strong, will probably ride this out better. It will be interesting to see. Um, I also mentioned earlier that, that BCLP is a, is a one firm, one profit pool, a, a true merger for want of a better word. And I think that it's going to be interesting how a Swiss Ferrain fares in this sort of, in this model, because you know, whilst from the outside looking in, a Swiss Verein appears to be one firm, the reality is that you can't share profits between Verein members. And so actually with a global pandemic like we've got, with so many geographies, jurisdictions, countries and cities impacted, actually the, the, a well-hedged firm with a, with a one profit pool model will hopefully and may be able to ride that wave a little bit or ride the storm sorry a little bit more smoothly and it'll be interesting to see how some of those firms that don't have that hedge or don't have that support of bits of the business that are delivering really well how they will fare um i mean we we've we've looked to support our practices that are particularly busy r and i insurance with those parts of the business that are, that are slightly less busy maybe so, and we've done the same with our BD and marketing teams, actually. We've looked to put our, you know, our events team as an example, who aren't running corporate hospitality in the events as they classically were. They've stepped in and been fantastic in supporting us on, on, on webinars and on digital communications. And actually, yeah. those, those sorts of flexes have got to, be, got to be there. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that, Pete. And it, it's interesting to hear straight, straight from you what's, what's happening in terms of tilting people within the firm structure. What one thing that we've been asked in advance of today and people want to hear is what practically does this mean for partners leading who are, who are leading BD efforts and, and for the BD team? How, how do you think clients want them to respond? Um, I think it's a good question. I think that, that general, general counsel, CEOs, MDs, they're, they're telling us that the COVID-19 market is just, it's flooded, absolutely flooded. As, as someone within a global firm, is that is seeing what's happening and what's approaching in the US and, and in China, is that, uh, is, is that helpful for you as you try and navigate this from the UK? Um, I think, I think it, it is. And it's interesting because, I mean, Asia was obviously impacted first at the moment. And actually, the, uh, we have offices in, in Beijing, Hong Kong and Singapore. And it's really helped us from uh from um because they they were they were on lockdown first they were working from home first it's helped us um understand how to best implement that in other jurisdictions and other regions i mean asia's asia's hit first it looks like hong kong is recovering a bit now numbers are down in terms of of uh, of infections um so it probably looks like it will return to the new normal first is it going to benefit us having asian offices or um <laughs> It, it depends on the market, honestly. Um, I, I, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question. It may well be a benefit. The interesting thing about Singapore, for example, is that then they're having a second peak. They've got, they've got issues with migrant workers in dormitories where there's been a second outbreak. Now they're, so they're trying to control that. So actually, I think that it's going to be, we're just going to have to wait and see. I mean, is it going to be an advantage having Asia offices? Depends upon the market. Depends upon how the, the regions recover. I mean, if you take the U.S. as a as a contrast, the U.S. is such a massive country that actually, I think you'll probably find there are state by state, city by city differences. Um, I suspect you'll find that New York, in being such a dense, densely populated city, will will be one of the last out of it. But other areas may recover faster. I think it's just a, a wait and see challenge. Okay, thanks, Pete. I'm, I'm conscious of time, and, and one of the things um, I'd really like to return to is the, is the poll that we asked people to vote on earlier. Um, and if I may just uh, share the results with you, are you um, are you able to see that now, Peter, on your screen? Yeah, I can. So, yeah. uh, key relationship management, sex and focus of cancer. So, over half of people think that it's going to be the biggest demand. I, I think. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with that. It's, it's interesting to see digital marketing not as high. And I, I, interestingly, I'm, I am in, also inclined to agree with that. I think it's here, but I think there is a point when we go back where people are probably going to just crave a bit of personal contact. 
Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, I think, I think that actually from a, my perspective, key relationship management sectors and accounts, uh, I mean, absolutely. It comes back to the points I made towards the end, you know, know your client, know the sector, get to know them, get close to them. Yeah. Um, you know, reinforcing the relationships we have with our clients right now is critically important. And I, I'm, I, I'm with that one. I completely endorse that. Yeah. L lots to do there with your sector, sector leadership role. Yeah. Yes. I mean, as, I mean, we're in a sector hat and you're trying to try to push that out. It's, uh, it's the, I'm going to say it's the Holy Grail. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, that law firms have done for a long time, how you, how you deliver it and how you implement it, I think is the challenge and, you know, behavior change is always the biggest thing I think in law firms and it's the biggest hurdle. Once you've got behavior change, I think you tend to get traction. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Okay. Pete, thanks very much for, for talking so candidly today and, and sharing those, those things with us. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you along. Uh, thanks, thanks to everyone around the world who's, who's watching this, uh, either live or on YouTube. Uh, we'll be back here, same place, same time next week. Um, and it will be, um, we're going to be hearing from the world of finance. So thanks very much to everyone. Take care. Thanks, Peter. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.